Recently in the Fans of Sarah Software Facebook group, Jim Welsh asked if it was possible to do an Affinity Photo tutorial, which was an adaptation of a Photoshop tutorial by the F64 Academy called Sky Replacement with Soft Light. Um, if you click on this link, it will take you to F64's own sort of website, but F64 Academy do also post their videos onto YouTube and this is the same video here and I will add a link to this in the description to this video but basically what is happening is and it, I would advise you to watch this video because he will explain it far better than I can but he, this is the landscape image that he wanted this skyline but he didn't have any decent clouds and then just off to the side here, he had decent clouds, but not a very good landscape image. And what he did was he took photographs of the clouds, so he would have the same tone and textures and what have you in the sky. And then he put it in to the image where he wanted the clouds to be. So that's the basic idea behind it. But like I said, watch the video. It's only like six and a half minutes long. Um, so you will see better what he was trying to do. Um, there is also a link here to download a couple of images, not these, this one that he's done the video with, but a couple of others. But they are DNG files, which are raw files, so you'd have to sort of process them first a little bit before you practice with them. Now, I haven't really got the time to go through all that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a couple of images I've got off of pixabay.com and again I will link these in to the description this one here of Munich where you've got the sky with next to nothing in it and this sky image which is very dramatic but I, and I, I freely admit it's probably the it's definitely the wrong sort of sky image for this particular image I'm going to put it into because it's not the same tone and colour and what have you but it will give you the idea of what to do and how it's happening um, rather than the end result being perfect so I hope this will answer Jim's um, question so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just right click this layer here and come to copy and then come back to the Munich image and then edit and paste. Now I'm just going to lower the opacity of this layer a bit so I can just about see the image behind. Come to the move tool and I'm just going to move this cloud into roughly where I want the effect to to be in the sky it's not too bad and then I will just raise the opacity back up to 100% and then I will hide that layer just by clicking in this box here take away the tick and then I will come down to the bottom layer and highlight that and then I'm going to use the selection brush tool now in the F64 video he selected the lower half of the image but I'm going to select the top half of the image and I'm going to make sure I'm on to add and then you can increase the size of the brush either by using the width option or you can use the left and right square bracket keys on the keyboard to raise or lower the size of the brush and then I just do a quick swipe across there and as you can see it's pretty much selected everything that I need there's a couple of bits here that I don't want selected so what I do is I come to subtract lower the brush size and I'll just quickly select them part of the reason why I picked this image was the ease of the skyline for me to just pretty much get all I want quite quickly but if this was 
a different skyline, there's many more buildings and what have you in it, you may have to take a bit more time making your selection. But once you have your selection made, what I'm then going to do is just highlight that top layer again, make it visible, and then I'm going to add a layer mask just by clicking on this sort of white square with a circle in it. And as you can see, that is now masked off the bottom half of the image and the top half has still got this sky visible. So I can now press Ctrl and D to lose that selection area. And then all I've got to do now is highlight this top layer and change the blend mode to soft light. So now, as you can now see, we now have those clouds in the sky. I can turn that, that's the original, and that's now with those new clouds in. So although it's not necessarily the same tone as the original sky, using the soft light mode, I sort of brought them pretty much together in the right sort of colouring or what have you. We then can still make a slight alteration to this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, let's go with curves now if I make any alterations now this is going to alter the whole image and I only want it to alter the sky part so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this icon down until a blue line comes in between these two layers but only sort of comes to the edge of this icon not right the way across if it comes right the way across this layer will be a new layer between those two layers but if it, the blue line comes to just the beginning of the icons then it will be part or child of this layer only so it will only affect that layer so if I just click and drag this down and you can see that blue line that doesn't go all the way across if I come down a little bit further that is what we don't want the line going all the way across we just want it to be about there so as you can see that curves adjustment is now part of that layer there hang on oh, let me get that back so any adjustments I make now should only affect the sky area so I can make that a bit darker like that or whatever way you want to sort of take that alter it to your heart's content so basically that is the end of this tutorial I know the images I've used aren't perfect but and I haven't really taken time in making selections but I think the end result is explains the idea behind it so I hope that answers Jim Welsh's questions thank you for watching and goodbye